Hello, um, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, what, a bike what can you do with these people? <laughs> the idle Too interviewer. <laughs> I'm here with the idle interviewer, the worst interviewer I think we've had all season. Welcome, Tom Hodgkinson. Thank that's, you, camera two. That's funny, that's exactly what Jeremy Paxton said about did the he? interview we did with him. Yeah, he said this is the most shambolic interview I, I think I've <laughs> ever done. Um, John Lloyd is a uh, well-known TV producer who produced Not Nine O'Clock News, Spitting Image, Black Adder, um, and then had a, a short break for what we sometimes call contemplation. Um, and uh, which John might call a midlife crisis or even something of a breakdown uh, before re-emerging with um, the idea for a new show called QI. Well, it's odd, Tom, because if by midlife crisis you, you mean I earned a huge amount as a commercials director, yes, I did. But no, it was an odd, it was an odd uh, decade, really. I um, spent uh, the days shooting Largo commercials and building societies and the evenings reading Spinoza and Heidegger uh, and that's really what as you know who I was about <laughs> and potatoes carrots and beetroot so, so what, it was based on um, your reading in those years as well it wasn't that you sort of suddenly woke up and said, I, I can't stand doing, doing this anymore and then buried yourself in a library and then emerged with the QI concept uh, well partly that I mean the I had this crisis Christmas Eve uh, in 92, I think it was, 93 maybe, 42, so with, yeah, I was 42, Christmas yeah. Eve, 1993, I woke up and I couldn't see the point of anything, that hit me like a, like a wall, I just ran into a wall and I just completely collapsed, I couldn't see the point of anything at all, and so I sort of pulled myself out of that, I was very miserable for the first three years and then gradually you, pull, you get better at, you know, mending yourself. And the principal insight I discovered, the two things that stopped me being depressed were long walks, a walk for more than two and a half hours, and reading interesting stuff. I found that always worked. So they're, they're your top cures, top two cures for melancholy. Oh yeah, uh, definitely, get out. This. Get outside. Get out, talk to other people, yeah. don't sit under the duvet and, and feel sorry for yourself. Because mm. I know this is cruel to say to people who are depressed, but I've, since I've been there in spades, depression is essentially a psychological problem. I think it's not really curable by drugs. Sometimes it makes it worse. And, and it is a form of selfishness because it's a form of self-regard where you just go on and on saying, oh, it's all about me and it's all terrible and I'm really depressed and so on. The minute you get out and go to the pub and have a few drinks or a cup of tea, you, you do start to feel better. Yeah. And particularly, depression is a lot about pointlessness. And if you examine the universe closely, which QI does, everything from potatoes to supernovae, how can you be bored and depressed in this universe? It is, it is crazy. You don't, get, you don't get long. There's an awful lot to do and to know. And, and QI saved my life, quite honestly, um, by making you think, well, I, I, I can't afford to be depressed. I don't have time. And so, in a sense, you sort of philo philosophized your way out of it. Yeah. You didn't go down the kind of medical route of... Um, no, no, I'm... You try that sort I'm, of the, the pros I'm English public school, 60s. My, I, I'm the walk it off school of psychiatry. Pull yourself together, get a grip, and put your, put yourself in there. Um, and I, it, I probably could have shortened the shortened the journey, but you know, at the end of the day, what therapy and psychiatry is is not really a medical problem; it's a psychiatric problem. It's an, you know, being depressed is a way of looking at the world, which is, in my view, an error. Being cheerful, determinedly cheerful is the optimal way to look at the world. Mm. You're, you're like that. You're a cheerful kind of guy. You're positive. They're both equally valid because the universe is a terrifying and depressing and miserable place. But it's also a wonderful place. Look at this wonderful estuary, all these kids swimming in the sunny day and the clouds and the lovely bushes and everything. It's absolutely amazing. But in a bad mood, you can see it another way. And that's why they say when you kill yourself because the balance of your mind is disturbed. It's about balance. It's about the balance being wrong. And so um, philosophy was what did it for me, and I was astonished, you know, when I first came across Buddhism in my early 40s. Why does nobody tell you about this at school? This is a really good idea. How about being nice to people and realising that, you know, what goes around comes around? Or quantum mechanics. What? I got a grade six in physics O-level. It was so boring, physics. And you read quantum mechanics. If I'd been told that at 11, I would have been a physicist, I guarantee it. 
and and so it's just this information that we don't we are not given because we are actually still educating kids in the West as if we had an empire we're educating them to run you know large companies that we don't have large countries that we don't have and not and, and large companies and large companies and what we don't educate people is, is how to be which is what the idler does how to be what's what's important in life you know your friends are important having something you do that you care about and having interests it's simple and actually you're not idle is a joke that it's called the idol but in the sense that you know that play is more important than work by a very long chalk that's good and of course QI is it's very hard work but you know so is professional golf and football any sportsman knows Olympic sportsman is incredibly hard work to get there but it's still play it's still a game and QI is a very hard working game but you come to that show, you think everyone in this studio loves what they do. They know what they're doing, they adore it. It's very unusual in television now, because it's made from the heart, you know. Uh, could you, um, thank you, John, that's, that's, <laughs> what, <laughs> that was a wonderful peroration. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to conclude now. I mean, can you, it? Could you um, point our readers and viewers to, you know, three books? The Hendrix Book of Gin, I recommend. <laughs> Three books. Yeah, I mean, I know you're an Alan Watts fan. Yes, I'm a big Alan Watts fan. And, and just to say, <laughs> it's very funny, I recommended that, a book by Alan Watts, the book on the taboo against being who you are, which is one of my favourite books. Mm. I had two people come up to me and say it saved their life. Two guys in middle life who had never come across any form of philosophy who were, just had their eyes opened, it was an epiphany, and they go, whoa, one's now become an expert in it, he gives talks all around the country, and the other per person definitely would have killed himself if he hadn't had been for that. And then I bumped into a friend of mine called Charlie, who's a sort of, you know, boutique banker, you know, right now for class, and he said, Johnny, I, I bought your Alan Watts taboo book, couldn't answer a bloody word. <laughs> So that's, that's the dichotomy, really. So I would definitely mm. recommend that book to anybody. Yeah. Uh, what are philosophy books you're talking about? Well, I'm thinking, yeah, the, 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 you know, if there's all, a couple of philosophers or you know, books that help you move on to the next stage, if you like, or get over the depression. Well, I don't know, there's just so many. I mean, you, Plato, yeah. you know, I think Alfred North Whitehead was the guy who said that the whole of Western philosophy is essentially mm. a series of footnotes to Plato. Okay. And, and, and which is... And Plato is largely really Socrates. Yeah. As far as we know, uh, yeah. how, how much mm. Plato invented, we don't know. But um, the Phaedo, uh, Plato's account of the death of Socrates, is very influential to me. And it gives you a, a sort of thumbnail print of what Socrates probably was like. Yeah. Very, very moving, very interesting, funny. Mm. Um, that would certainly be high up there. Yeah. Um, uh, other books, try not to think of something too pretentious. Well, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius is a very good place to start. It, Stoic, that, philosophy. Stoic philosophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, actually, at the end of the day, the roots of all the great philosophies are sort of the same, that yeah. there's a hidden pattern and harmony that if you, if you uh, harmonize yourself with it, uh, you will have a better time. And however it's expressed, Epicureanism, which people mistakenly think or head, is hedonistic, which is basically shag everything, eat everything and you'll be fine, but it's not. It's the pursuit of pleasure. And what Epicurus said was the pursuit of pleasure is as much about making other fee people feel good as making yourself feel good. And the way to do that is to be nice. You know, be kind to people. It's, it's everywhere. It's in hidden, perhaps, in Christianity, but it's certainly obvious in Buddhism. It's, it's obvious in Taoism. Behaving well, behaving properly is very rewarding. I know this is very funny, Tom, but, <laughs> but it is what drives yeah. me now mm. that I've found an awful lot of things that are problematic are often solved by just, you know, behaving better, mm. really. Generously. Living kindly mm. and thoughtfully. And, and it's what's well, that joke somebody said before you criticize someone, walk a mile in their shoes. That way you'll be a mile away and they won't have any shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but actually that thing is, before you get cross in any situation, whether it's work or with your children, 
why don't you try and see it from the other person's angle and almost always you go oh yeah it's not all about me mm -hmm. you know we all live in a solipsistic universe where we the, the universe appears to cycle around us and of course it doesn't work for us because it's not always on our side it seems to be on other people's side frequently because it's not on anyone's side JFK is a good quote JFK is to say the universe is unfair but sometimes it's unfair in your favor <laughs> <laughs> John thank you very much thank we'll you leave it there. philosophers